Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from No Flight Images and um, in this video I'm going to decide what I want to replace this, my GFX 100S with, whether I fancy uh, replacing it with a GFX 180 or even the Hasselblad X3D. Uh, what are these cameras? Because you'll not have seen them anywhere. Um, this is purely based on a new sensor announced from Sony. Now, a lot of people have discussed this, what does it mean? Um, but I didn't see many people actually saying, what does it mean in terms of real camera development? Because the, the chip itself, and I go, uh, I mentioned a few details about the chip, what it is, what it isn't, uh, and why it's relevant to cameras, not just medium format stuff as well, but Sony and Nikon cameras as well. The new chip, um, is uh, Sony make a lot of sensor chips. This is one of their IMX series. There's an IMX811, so it's a new series. Um, this uh, Sony Semiconductor uh, make this information pretty widely available, um, but the one they've announced, 247 uh, megapixels, 64 millimeter diagonal on the sensor. Now that's a big chip. Uh, in fact, there aren't any cameras currently produced that use a chip that size, not because it's too big, just because the aspect ratio is different. It's, it's three to two, if I remember rightly. But I've tested in the past. This is an H6D from Hasselblad uh, with the big medium format uh, chip in it. This is the 100 megapixel version 8, so H6D 100C. Excellent camera, got some really nice looking pictures when I was testing with it. It is everything you expect from medium camera, medium format camera, proper medium format, not the smaller medium format of this. And I was using it with the Hasselblad HTS 1.5 tilt shift adapter. That's why I was looking at it. Um, I, I looked at an earlier version of it and um, I've got some details in my book about tilt shift lenses. It's why I was originally working with this. But anyway, this new chip, it's listed as 247 megapixels. It's primarily for industrial use. If you look at the chips that are available currently from Sony, there is no mention of the sort of chips that would go in this. Something, this has uh, got a 102 megapixel chip in it. This would be the IMX461 based chip. Um, the Hasselblad X2D has a similar chip and it gives you about 102, just over 100 megapixels with small medium format, so 33 by 44 millimeters. Now, the new chip is available with readouts, 12-bit, 14-bit, 16-bit, whole variety of different readout speeds and things like that. Although I'm going to suggest that if you're using medium format, you're probably not that bothered about lightning fast readout, but who knows? Uh, could be used for all sorts of things. But what are real cameras? That's 247 uh, two megapixels. Now, there is a 151 megapixel version, which is used in some cameras, uh, some medium format stuff, phase one and the likes. But I'm just looking at really at this size. Um, so a camera that I might actually get to have a go with, as opposed to just borrow to test. Now, if you look at the specs in detail, you see that the pixel size of the new sensor, and this is the key bit of information, the pixel size of the new sensor is 2.81 micron square per pixel. The pixels in this and the X2D are 3.76 micron square. Now, simple calculation to work out the increase in pixel density that you get by going to the new technology that's used in this chip that's been announced. And that is a 1.79 times increase in pixel density. So that turns 1.79. Remember, the, or the, the final numbers will be subject to uh, marketing influence. So uh, this one here, if we're just going by the number of megapixels, this one becomes the new version, becomes the GFX 180 or 180S when they bring out one as an update for this. So that's 180. And I would imagine Hasselblad would bring out the same and bring themselves out an X3D of some sort, and you would have 180 megapixels in this. You'll have all the usual whistles and bells, plus a few new ones that they think up, and that'll give you, you know, a nice camera. And going from 100 to 180, yeah, I think you'd notice the difference. What about Sony and Nikon? Well, let's apply that 1.79 times uh, multiplier. Currently, uh, they're using, and these are made by Sony, uh, although 
you know, the precise chips that go into a particular camera can be modified. If, uh, if, you, if you want to buy enough sensor chips, you can have modifications put in, so you can have changes to the specs on them. You just need to buy enough of them. So Sony and Nikon, their 60 megapixel sensors jump to 107. Now that gets, for 35mm format, jumps us up above the magic 100 megapixels mark. Now, 100 megapixels, you're going to say, what about the lenses? Yeah, what about the lenses? Um, I found that increasing, over the years of looking at different cameras and stuff, and increases in resolution, that better sampling of whatever lens you use gets you better results. Um, now, this particular lens that's on here, this is an Astra Hori. Uh, this is a 75mm f4 manual focus lens that I've just been trying out on this, the uh, GFX 100S. Um, it's an interesting lens. It's not a high spec lens. Um, certainly if you try using it at f4, you're going to notice that mm, it's, a, it's a little bit uh, flaky, a little bit an interesting look, shall we say. But take this up to f8, works just fine. Now I'll, I'll have another look at this uh, before long and I've got some uh, some prints made from some photos I've take, taken with this uh, that's just a nice one to use. Now will this lens work on 100? Sure it'll work on it. Um, the thing about yeah the lens that better sampling gives better results. So there we have um, two non-existent cameras, X3D and a GFX 180. Although I can see marketing might want to make that a GFX 200. Um, so you, you know, it just depends on how much they decide whether the number represents the number of megapixels or not, how closely it does. So the big question is when are you going to see these cameras? Not for a while, I'd suggest. Now at the moment, Sony does not list any sensors at this new uh, size or derivatives of that size, it doesn't list any of those in its listings. I would expect, given that they've now announced this for industrial use, I would expect that sample 180 megapixel sensors are in laboratories at Fuji and at Hasselblad and are currently being put into camera bodies like this to investigate how they're going to move forward to it. Uh, we may not see them for a year or two, uh, just depends on the market, could be sooner, could take longer, but you can rest assured that if a sense, if a chip has been produced at this size, the companies will be looking at it. They want the next step, step up. They want that next step up so they can charge you a whole lot more money for your stuff, now, particularly for things this size, even this though. But anyway, there you have it. Um, some imaginary cameras and when you might see them. What about the 100 megapixel for Sony? Mm, I think probably next year. Maybe later this year, but I reckon that. I have no information other than extrapolation and the fact that I used to work in uh, electronics few, quite a few years ago and still follow all this stuff. Hope that's been of some interest. Um, I will be returning to more factual matters in due course. As I say, I got some prints I want to make from this particular uh, print, this, this particular camera here and lens because uh, the P5300 that I reviewed has gone back, so I'm back to making prints on the P5000 here, which is pretty much the same as the 5300 I've been looking at recently. Uh, that's of some interest. Please do ask questions if you've got any. Um, I'm not turning the channel into uh, following rumours and the likes, but I was just interested in this one because of the technological side of it and that curiosity as to how big you could go. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye.